Good morning, very warm welcome, welcome back um, to the session on agricultural and climate risk insurance. Now, before we start, just again, some housekeeping items so that those who didn't participate in the previous session um, know what this session is about and what you need to look at. So this session is a 90 minute session. Uh, we have a Q&A feature. You can um, ask questions in the Q&A or you just put in the chat. Um, after the three presentations of the three speakers, we'll try to be a little bit more interactive as much as can be done in this virtual session. Um, so you can raise your hand, uh, lower your hand and mute yourself after you spoke. Let's see how that works. The session is being recorded, that's very important. Um, and we upload the slides and the recording of the session um, and the other sessions on the conference website. That question came in the previous session. And if you have any technical problems, you can chat with what we see the MIN executive team, the Y Controls Network executive team, who's hosting this uh, conference technically and a very big thank you to the team for doing such a great job. So now we can go back to our speakers. Um, we just heard in the previous session uh, that climate change is a key challenge for low income communities in the region. Some products are available, um, as Klima explained uh, in his presentation. But then we heard from Mimosa from Albania that in her country, there's a high demand for agricultural insurance, but very little supply. And I believe that might be the case in other countries as well. Now, I gave some guiding questions to the three speakers of this panel. Um, we are interested in hearing, and the audience is interested in hearing about solutions that are implemented for agriculture insurance or climate risk insurance, especially for the low income market, for smallholder farmers. Um, we want to understand and want to hear about some successes. What were the challenges? What were lessons learned from such schemes? Um, and certainly in the post-COVID digitization wave, to what extent are digital solutions an enabler for agriculture and climate risk insurance products? Um, so we would like to know what works, what does not work, what are main challenges, how to overcome those challenges, what are the gaps that need to be filled to increase outreach and barriers for market development. Um, we had, we heard in the previous presentation about the results from the IAS study, concluding that policy actions are needed on supply and demand side. We need PPPs, regulatory actions, and we need financial literacy activities. And maybe we can take this up in that session and also try to be more concrete to understand what does it exactly mean. Now we have two representatives from the insurance industry and one from a major donor organization. And let me just quickly introduce the three speakers. I have the pleasure to welcome Nadika Janowska Boschkowska from Northern Macedonia representing Eurobri. She studied at the University of Rome, holds a master degree in international economics. Um, until 2020, she was head of the representative office of Europe, and now she's project director for Northern Macedonia and Serbia, and still head of the representative office in Skopje of Europe. So, welcome, Nadika. Um, I would like welcome back, and luckily, it worked with the technology. Welcome, Devi Keshin Nasvili, chairman of the Georgian Insurance Association. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, he is the chairman of the board of the Georgian Insurance Association since 1998 and was a founding member of the Georgian Insurance Association in 1996. He holds a PhD in physics and uh, at the, from the University of Jena in Germany, in my country. So welcome, Devi, and we are really interested in hearing about the role of insurance associations as well. And our third speaker is Andriy Cheripov, agricultural insurance and agricultural finance expert from the IFC in the Ukraine. And he has an MBA in business administration and is working in his position as agricultural insurance lead and regional coordinator since 2000. And 
13. Now, nice round of applause to all the speakers virtually. And I would like to invite Nadika to start her presentation. So she is frozen. We can't hear or see you, or at least I cannot hear or see you. Now she disappeared. So by the time she comes back, maybe Devi, you would like to start with your presentation so that we don't lose too much time. You are on mute, you please turn on your microphone. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Very nice. Oh, mm -hmm. Nadika is back. Ah, Nadika is back. I don't know what happened, sorry. <laughs> so then we can start with you again. We haven't started yet. So if you want to start with your presentation. Okay, I'll share my screen now. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so thank you very much, Dirk. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today I will um, uh, share the experience uh, from North Macedonia and Serbia um, projects mainly that uh, where we operate as Europari. Um, our uh, mission is to improve access to affordable, high quality cat and weather insurance products for homeowners, SMEs, and farmers in disaster prone emerging market economies. And um, that's why we uh, actually entered this uh, Southeast uh, region where we feel that uh, a certain uh, um, uh, support in uh, increasing the penetration rate of insurance uh, was needed. So we operated in, um, in Serbia, in Albania, in uh, North Macedonia, Bosnia, and also in Kazakhstan. Uh, where we, uh, with the support of uh, different donors, uh, we implement uh, uh, some uh, projects uh, in uh, uh, with uh, inclusive uh, insurance activities. Um, but now I will stick to the uh, North Macedonia and Serbia, where we have active projects at the moment. Uh, before I start with the agriculture insurance, I would like just to say that in general, penetration and density of insurance in North Macedonia and in Serbia, it's uh, quite low, low. Uh, compared to the EU average, even Southeast Europe, uh, we can see that 1.5% uh, is the penetration in North Macedonia and Serbia. Uh, measured as a gross return premium as a percentage of the GDP. It's similar with the density presented as a gross uh, return premium per person uh, in North Macedonia is 78 euros, Serbia 102 euros, compared with the EU average, it's uh, very, very uh, uh, low. Um, the similar, we'll see that the, the, we have uh, a similar image or the reflection is similar in the agriculture insurance um, uh, um, uh, line of business, uh, but uh, it uh, we really need to change this because uh, in both countries the agriculture sector is a very important sector of the economy. Uh, it consists eight percent of the GDP in North Macedonia. Sixteen percent of the jobs are in this sector. Uh, around uh, thirteen percent of the country export is uh, uh, from agriculture, mainly uh, exporting fresh and processed vegetables and fruits, tobacco and uh, wine. It's similar in Serbia: six percent of the GDP, fifteen percent of the jobs are in this uh, um, sector. Uh, even more, ninety percent of the, the country exports uh, are from agriculture products, mainly raspberries, plums, maize, and uh, wheat. Unfortunately, uh, the, not only that it's important sector, but at the same time, it's uh, very vulnerable to climate risk. In North Macedonia, hail, spring, frost, flood, and drought are the main climate risks that uh, um, are that hit the, the this uh, sector and the production. But the interest of farmers in insurance is uh, unfortunately uh, insignificant. Uh, there are. Mm, the currently, currently the um, 
I'm, I can say that uh, up till 2015, the agricultural insurance penetration reached its peak of 3.5%, but uh, evident drop was um, recorded in 2017. Uh, since then, the number of insured farms remain stagnant despite the 60% premium subsidy or up to the 2,500 euro per farmers that it's provided by the government through the paying agency, institution responsible for direct uh, support payments and IPER payments. Um, in 2020, only 2% of the registered farmers were uh, insured. And uh, we see here on my left-hand side graph, um, mainly in uh, 2020, the, these farmers that are insuring the, uh, the, the, their production are uh, big uh, farmers, export-oriented, business-oriented farmers. The number of policies is decreasing, but the area is increasing. Uh, knowing the fact that the uh, Macedonia is um, characteristic with uh, small-scale farmers, average farm size is 2.8 hectares, uh, in a way we still live unprotected without financial protection, the uh, mainly poor and vulnerable farmers, but those that are business and export-oriented are uh, buying uh, insurance. Um, on the, the right hand side, I have a graph that presents the premium and the claims of the market uh, for the period 2016-2020, and we can see here that uh, actually uh, the, for this five year period, the, the, the average loss ratio is around 81%, so the collected premiums and the, the paid claims are, uh, are in a way uh, equal. So um, there are also insurance companies that uh, have um, um, in a row a uh, few years negative technical results, so they, they don't want to uh, offer this uh, a line of uh, business. Uh, what are the main uh, challenges or let's say barriers for um, increasing this uh, penetration rate or uh, protecting uh, uh, the farmers uh, against uh, climate risks? One very big um, uh, challenge or barrier are the government put disaster payments of up to 100% of the uh, loss. Thankfully, in 2019, this measure or this, um, uh, this was stopped and uh, certain articles from the law on agriculture and rural development were uh, deleted in order not to continue this kind of post disaster payments because from one side, it was uh, this kind of payment was uh, spoiling the farmers, expecting that uh, the um, that the government is always here to pay, no need for insurance, and uh, it, uh, it from another side, uh, this was uh, also uh, demotivating the insurance uh, uh, companies. Um, it, it was not sustainable in a way. Uh, also, insurance companies avoid insuring farmers with high risk. This could be a challenge, especially uh, race and area. It's very risky because almost uh, certain it's that every year uh, hail or uh, spring frost uh, uh, will occur, and um, and uh, this um, let's say uh, and also farmers that expect certain loss are interested to buy insurance. So, so, they, uh, so it was really tricky uh, who to be insured. Uh, and uh, it, it, the, the underwriters really had a, a, a tough uh, job. Uh, also, the insurance companies do not provide cover uh, coverage for all relevant risks. Um, from farmers' perspective, uh, they're dissatisfied with the claim management process and the, they, uh, they uh, believe that the, uh, the insurance companies uh, offer expensive insurance with high deductibles. But I will go back with uh, one main challenge also is the late subsidy payments. The program is uh, defined in a way that 40% of the premium is paid directly by the uh, farmers to the insurance companies and 60% it's actually paid from, uh, from the paying agency directly to the uh, insurance companies. Um, and this uh, payment 
was very often uh, delayed, uh, even not paid during the current year when the policy was issued by the next year, which uh, um, uh, was uh, making different uh, bookkeeping for uh, problems uh, to the insurance companies, even uh, they had to keep reserves, etc., etc. So uh, improvement of the subsidy payments program uh, is, uh, is uh, needed. Um, in Serbia, it's similar. The main, uh, it's a very vulnerable uh, sector uh, and the main climate risks are hail, drought and flood. Uh, here we have a higher insurance, uh, agricultural insurance uh, penetration rate of 12% of the registered farmers are insured, but still uh, we are facing with the insignificant uh, interest by the farmers. However, this uh, graph shows that uh, from 2016 up to today, we have an upward trend of uh, growth return premium in both crops and livestock. Um, and uh, it may be due to this can be uh, in a way prescribed to the premium subsidies, 40 to 45 percent of the premium is uh, subsidized or up to 70 percent in some more vulnerable areas like uh, Shumadia, Zlatibor, Podunavia, Moravec and Kolubara uh, district. Uh, the, the only difference between the Macedonian subsidy program and Serbian is that here in Serbia they have also maximum amount supported for uh, sub uh, sectors. I will not go through the same uh, the, the challenges because uh, the similar challenges with uh, what uh, North Macedonia is facing with are the challenges uh, that Serbia is facing with. Uh, the only difference is that in Serbia, the government for disaster payments are some uh, are ad hoc or based on different factors. Not uh, the government is not always paying uh, um, to the farmers if an adverse weather event uh, occurs. So they they have to have a government session decide, etc. So the agriculture insurance market and the available insurance products uh, in both markets are indemnity agriculture products offered through the uh, insurance uh, companies, livestock products, and uh, the index-based insurance, which was supported by Europa Read. Uh, the main uh, differences between these uh, products uh, are in the risk covered coverage, uh, the index-based yield that was taken in consideration when we speak about index-based insurance and individual uh, for indemnity-based insurance and uh, in indemnification. Uh, what we have done, how we started when we entered the markets in Southeast Europe and in Serbia and Macedonia, through the donor support, we uh, actually developed the area yield index insurance in order to um, uh, in, in a way, impact uh, in uh, um, in uh, uh, raising or increasing this um, penetration rate, uh, uh, agriculture uh, insurance penetration rate. Um, uh, we did a certain market research, and uh, the results show that uh, the farmers uh, would like to see uh, um, coverage uh, or would like to be protected by other uh, risks than those that are offered at, the mar at, at that point in 2014. So the agriculture insurance offered protection against all natural catastrophes and biological perils that could lead to reduction of crop yields. Uh, with uh, this, with the area yield coverage, a farmer ensures the average municipal expected yield of the crop, not the individual crop yield. And what are the benefits for the farmer that uh, they uh, they receive? Actually, the difference between the actual yield and the insured average yield in the index municipality. Uh, the premium is calculated using a special developed statistical model based on historical data. And uh, the historical data that we used were from the state statistical offices in both countries. Um, uh, uh, we took uh, around 20 years historical data. It's good that statistical offices uh, have this kind of data and this, this was very helpful in order to develop the, the product. Uh, the expected yield that is taken in consideration is five-year average uh, coverage, 50 to 80 percent of the expected yield, and the crops for which we provided coverage was wine grapes, wheat, maize, barley, sunflower in um, North Macedonia, because uh, those are one of the uh, four crops, and maize, soya, sunflower, and wheat in Serbia. Uh, 
The coverage uh, period uh, is the entire vegetation period of the crop. From sowing to harvesting and the method of identification is actually, we uh, are waiting for the state statistical uh, office to publish official crop yield data. And if the real municipal yield is lower than the insured average municipal yield, the farmer is compensated. Uh, something that it's uh, very easy. There are not a lot of procedures, but the farmer the, the farmer has no obligation to prove that he has suffered any loss or the level of loss uh, loss uh, that was incurred. However, you know, while we uh, were uh, from 2014 up to today, we faced a lot of uh, challenging and sales experience, and we actually uh, learned uh, something uh, from um, uh, this um, experience. Most farmers do not perceive insurance as financial protection against climatic and biological risk, but view it as an unnecessary expense. They saw it as additional cost. We don't want insurance, uh, and we will ex uh, we will wait what the government will do. We will expect uh, direct payout. Um, they were also skeptic uh, with uh, uh, for uh, with the SSO data. Uh, some of them uh, do not fully understand the product, uh, not only the farmers, but there were cases even the ag uh, agents that were selling the product did not uh, fully understand the product or did not explain well. So uh, there were some um, problems in, in, uh, in the farmers uh, were not uh, happy uh, what was presented to them. Uh, big farmers, uh, big farms, big farm holdings express more interest and better understand the product. However, they do not accept the average municipal expected yields because uh, in most of the ca cases, their, um, expect uh, their yield was higher than the average municipal expected yield. Um, in Serbia, um, the product responded better on a meso level uh, sale and in North Macedonia uh, micro level. So we, in North Macedonia, we, uh, did the sale through the insurance companies, our partners, and in Serbia, uh, insurance companies, our partners uh, uh, were uh, uh, selling it uh, through the municipalities. The municipality authority was buying the, the uh, product and uh, uh, providing financial protection uh, for the territory of the municipality. So the sales challenges were raising awareness for agriculture insurance, limited number of crops covered with area yield uh, also was a challenge. Accuracy of the, the state statistical office data and especially for North Macedonia, this week payment of the 60% of the premium uh, uh, to, to the insurance uh, companies. Uh, so we actually, after finishing uh, that project, we sit down, um, think about how to improve uh, the, the sale because uh, it was not uh, very much uh, successful, not, uh, not uh, very well uh, perceived by the partners and accepted. So thankfully, we, um, uh, we developed a macro and mesa insurance program financed by the Insure Resilience Solution Fund and the Ropare. We get a grant uh, uh, for that program, one, uh, uh, one million euro project financed equally by ISF and the Ropare, uh, through which uh, we developed a meso level municipality area yield pro, uh, product. Uh, providing financial protection of the poor and vulnerable beneficiaries in the municipalities against natural disasters. Uh, here in Serbia, we stick to this index based model on the meso level. Our partner is Global Sosiguranja. And uh, in North Macedonia, we, um, we changed the model in a way. So we uh, uh, developed a macro level sovereign agriculture program agriculture insurance pool where our partners are a minister of agriculture forestry and water economy and insurance supervision agency the our objective is uh, to reach 1.8 million of poor and vulnerable beneficiaries actually to protect uh, as much as possible uh, farmers um, what we are doing uh, at the moment, this project is, um, this project both in Serbia and Macedonia are ongoing um, with uh, a bit, um, a small delays in both countries, especially in Serbia due to COVID and uh, elections, but uh, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we are moving slowly, but uh, successfully. Um, 
In North Macedonia, the Agriculture Regional School is in the process of development. It's a, a comprehensive weather risk pooling solution for the Macedonian uh, farmers. And the model is uh, similar like uh, Tarsin in uh, Turkey. Um, I can say similar because there are uh, specific differences between uh, both uh, models, the one in North Macedonia and the one in uh, Turkey. And that's the, that uh, after a lot of discussions, uh, analyzing of the market, the farmers, uh, discussions with the Ministry of Agriculture, it was decided that uh, a mandatory insurance for all registered farmers that apply for production subsidies will be uh, established in uh, North Macedonia. Uh, initially, we work on crop production. So first insurance on crop for crop production, and then livestock, livestock will be covered. Government subsidy will be 20% of the premium without uh, maximum amount in uh, absolute uh, value. Insurance companies will join the pool on voluntary basis, but I would uh, like to say that up till now, there were several discussions with insurance companies and at least uh, those that uh, offer at the moment agriculture insurance expressed interest to join the pool. Uh, the pool. Um, only pool issued policies will be uh, subsidized and uh, risk covered through the pool will not be able to be covered by the insurance companies which are not part uh, of uh, uh, the pool. So how we will enter new risks in the, uh, uh, through the, will be covered new risks through the uh, pool system, uh, those risks will not be covered uh, by, uh, by the insurance companies outside. Um, the, we are also developing uh, innovative and affordable insurance products and for uh, initially the plan is uh, to, uh, to start with indemnity based products that will cover basic risks such as um, um, hail, lightning, uh, fire and spring uh, frost um, because the farmers are more vulnerable to these risks and of course uh, uh, we are thinking about the uh, storm to be included uh, uh, later on but uh, this is how we will start uh, cost efficient that's with claim management it's uh, in the process of development and something that it's uh, very important from the regulatory point of view and the legal point of view the pool will be um, in a way public private partnership and uh, the government will be involved together with the insurance companies that will express interest to join the, the pool. Uh, in uh, Serbia, uh, we are we stick to the same um, meso level um, area yield insurance uh, product, a municipal area yield. Uh, where a municipality buys uh, uh, area yield coverage as a budget protection instrument in case of natural disasters uh, in agriculture. Uh, municipality authority actually is the policy holder and the insured uh, responsible for payment of full premium. Um, and uh, municipality authority determines who receives payout in case of loss, uh, uh, who are the beneficiaries. Um, decides which crops to insure, decides the scope of the uh, program, total area to be insured, issue yield coverage, and total sum insurance for replacement price. Uh, so, um, before I finish, uh, I, my last slide is about the role of the government and the donors, because uh, what I uh, presented now, everything was supported by donors and the government. So I think that their role is very important in order to uh, protect the farmers and uh, develop uh, inclusive insurance uh, models. So uh, the government, where I see it, uh, they need to raise the awareness of the farmers of agriculture insurance. The farmers believe in the government. They're so specific uh, group of people, target group, and um, they really uh, hear and uh, they, they, they really listen and uh, act in that way, um, uh, listen what the Ministry of Agriculture and the government will uh, say to them. Provide affordable mandatory insurance as a form of financial safety net for all economically vulnerable farmers and uh, work closely on, closely on improving the premium subsidies programs. Uh, donors, uh, they are also crucial and should uh, display flexibility in assessing how project objectives are being realized. Um, sometimes in the process, uh, pro, pro, 
project the implementation process uh, uh, we are now uh, facing with difficulties and of course we would like to uh, modify um, or um, or implement let's say agile man uh, management process um, uh, they need to be flexible uh, and uh, support that um, something else uh, that I would like to say is that uh, please donors don't leave this region because uh, the interest in supporting uh, Southeast uh, European region is decreasing, but donor support is still very much needed. Uh, we need those money to um, improve uh, our uh, agriculture uh, uh, sector and uh, uh, agriculture insurance. Um, Yes, you're providing TA and work closely with both the government and the insurance companies, but after uh, developing or established certain systems, sometimes uh, there, uh, the donors, uh, need, uh, donor support is needed in uh, providing funds for goods, uh, mainly IT infrastructure. So thank you very much. I hope I was uh, on time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nika. Um, I'll just would like to ask you a very quick question that comes out of the chat, and uh, I would like to add one thing. Um, the question from the chat is: When actually will this pool be in place, and what's the chance of that it will materialize? And I would like to add: Maybe you can very briefly describe the reactions of the market, the reactions of the insurers, and the uh, reactions of the farmers that all of a sudden. Or maybe not all of a sudden, but now there's a pool, which is a very different approach from what was there before. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, first, when um, our plan, action plan, is that uh, now we are in the process of um, starting the procedure of uh, enacting the law. So there will be a law of agriculture insurance. So this is a bit uh, bureaucratic administrative activity. It should be passed through the government and parliament. But um, I think that uh, due to the all that steps that uh, sh should be passed uh, before uh, June 2022, I don't expect that uh, it will be uh, in place. In meantime, uh, products are uh, uh, in the process of development and uh, uh, financial setup, uh, it's uh, done. So June 2022, earliest. Okay. And uh, in respect to the um, reactions of the farmers and the insurance uh, companies, in March 2021, uh, we had a conference where we uh, present uh, the plan and uh, surprisingly, the insurance companies uh, were very uh, positive. Uh, they see, in a way, the pool, uh, um, they, they believe that the pool will, uh, will impact on uh, this current problem that we have. First, only, uh, I think I show you in the presentation, less than 4,000 policies are sold uh, per year, only 2% uh, of the farmers are insured, and um, uh, most of those who expect certain losses. <laughs> so. Uh, through mandatory insurance, um, uh, insurance companies will uh, have uh, will actually provide uh, policies to uh, all registered insurance, uh, all registered farmers. So they see this as a positive step. Then the, we'll have a system. It will be structured. There will be no direct uh, payments by the government. Um, uh, so I think that. Uh, uh, this uh, regulating this uh, um, line of business is uh, uh, good for for the government and for the insurance uh, companies. Uh, farmers, to be honest, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, now they're also very positive and believed in the uh, process where the government is involved. I mentioned in this where the government is involved. They believe that now the claim process will be um, uh, will be uh, better structured. Uh, that uh, the uh, the premium will, will be lower. Uh, but I think um, 
will see their first uh, reactions the first year when the claims will have to be paid and when uh, when we'll have a uh, adverse weather event that uh, will strongly impact their production. Uh, but at the moment, both sides are uh, expecting something good to, to happen, which yeah. is positive. Great. Thank you very much for this insight and thank you very much for the presentation. And we will come back to you in the Q&A. There are more questions in the chat, so we will not forget those questions. But I would like to give the floor now to Debbie presenting some experience from Georgia. So your presentation is up. And you need to turn on your microphone, please. Good. Now we can hear you. Can you see me also? In my yes, screen? and we can see you. And my screen also? We can see your screen, yes. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much for this very interesting event. And uh, I was also start with some additional remarks. First of all, what is Georgia and insurance market? Georgia is 3.7 million people, 16 billion dollar, GVP and uh, something like $200 million insurance market. That is all what it is. Uh, so the penetration is quite low, despite a very interesting story that we have a quite high uh, penetration, up to 20% on health in private voluntary health insurance. And here is one comment of me, which is out of this session about agro, but in my understanding, most of these uh, health insurance can be also understood as inclusive insurance because the people which are participating voluntarily, they have limited resources and they have to do a very property risk assessment and risk management to understand what they have to buy uh, over and plus to add to it uh, informal networks to add to its savings to add, and so on, really to have a cover, which is uh, from the side of the government or from the side of not exceeding 50% of medical needs. But now in that regard, Georgian is a very unusual market. We have no one major class of mandatory insurances, even NTPL is not presented. Uh, we have small mandatory industry classes, which for lawyers, for actuaries, and so on. Uh, and uh, in that regard, the program we are talking now about, and we are talking not about a system of agroinsurance in Georgia, but may mainly about a program, a pilot program, which started uh, six years ago. The heritage we have had is maybe very close to the other countries with uh, socialist heritage. We have, uh, after the land privatization, we have had up, up to 500,000 mainly subsistence farmers. Uh, insurable land, crop insurable land up to 400,000 hectares, low productivity. Most of the land is not properly registered. Uh, generally, financial literacy among farmers low and insurance mining even lower. So the agroinsurance pilot project was uh, developed uh, also with the participation of the insurance association and with the support at that time with the Swiss Development Agency. I'm very grateful for that because it was an unusual story at that time. And uh, the crucial weakness uh, of uh, the situation in Georgia towards agroinsurance was insufficient, not reliable data and information for premium calculation crops and regions, as well as climate related data. I was uh, listening for the previous presentation, really, it was amazing. They have had really 20 years of data experience. We have had nothing. Therefore, what uh, was to be done without these about yields, about climate, and so on, 
And there, there was a story which was understood but not quantified is that great variation of climate and crops across the region. Therefore, to define exactly what we started and would have till now is a government subsidized named peril damage based insurance program. The weather related disasters are hail, flood, storm, and a autumn frost for citrus. So it is a very limited package. It is not very good for the farmer because a lot of risks are not covered. It is also not very good for the financial organizations in terms of easing access to credit, but it is how it is. There was from the beginning an understanding that the product has to combine interests to address interests of business farmers and subsistence farmers, and therefore a lot of compromises inside. For example, a limitation toward the insurable land of five hectares. Uh, over the years, five to eight companies were participating, some of them stably, some of them moving out and coming in. What we have uh, now, it is a 50% premium subsidy for vineyards and 70% for all other crops. And uh, all together over the years, the budget was five to nine million gal. It means it is uh, one third in dollars. So that is a very small program, which we are now talking about, but it was something to learn more than really to have economic effect. Now I give you some figures. Look, the average premium in gal, so it means three times less in uh, dollars, is uh, last uh, last year up to 300 up to 200 dollars area the overall plot size if you see, like you see is less than 1 hectare it means that uh, mostly subsistence farmers are targeted business farmers also but in wine there is more interest also for small business farmers who's already produced their own wine. The average claim is also not so high. You see it grew up to two and a half thousand lari. And the claims frequencies, which started dramatically in 2014-15, uh, are dropped up to 25%. It is, of course, high, but it is usual for climate related risks. Six days ago, we have had a major hail event, as we now understand, affecting something over 20% of the insured uh, farmers. Well, another uh, story is uh, the premium which is paid over the years. You see instability of the majorly of the uh, subsidy budget. Uh, it varies significantly. And this instability is also not so good for uh, businesses to invest in uh, this field. At the same way of the number of insurance plots, you see up and downs. Uh, some of the more uh, well, these up and downs again have to do with the instability of the regulatory framework, because one day the government said they, they will have only properly legislated land to be insured with government subsidies. But now, well, it came again up. And we have a certain uh, stability on the level of over 20,000 farmers, up to half a million. Uh, therefore, that is again something that what we understand is clearly very complicated because uh, all these, uh, the whole story is uh, now a pilot. It is not a system we are moving towards, we understand now more what is, has to be done. 
The other story that is also very interesting is uh, how it is distributed over regions. And you see that most of the insurance penetration is to regions who are producing uh, crops that are have a business structure. And the same way as uh, uh, crops itself, wine is leading fruits and others uh, have a much smaller share. So we, what we see is that we are not using what we started to talk about is great variety of crops and regional because we are not there. The other story is that unfortunately over these years, uh, we are, were not able to obtain qualified data from meteorology or observations or for, for yields and so on. That is all practically what we know is from the regions where we are presented ourselves. And that is how we think to develop. Uh, the, con the, prim the budget for uh, premium subsidies is unfortunately also over the years, a one year practically, there is not a multi-annual budget framework. And that is also uh, negatively affecting the uh, investment strategies of the insurance companies. The calculation of insurance premium is the same for many crops and regions. Flat premium rates across are an obstacle to ensure the viability expansion of an agro insurance project. And one uh, important thing, and that is a mutual understanding among uh, the industry and so that the independence and qualification of loss adjusters as well as standardization of the procedures of loss adjustment is very important. All these together gives us an understanding that uh, we learned a lot. The wordings are today much better, pro-farmer, let us say so, and uh, claims uh, are uh, paid very quickly. Digitalization is also ongoing, especially in the COVID era, uh, that is, was very positive in that regard. For the claims procedures, we are now introducing a mandatory use of digital cameras among the different uh, claims adjusters belonging to or tied to companies. And uh, now, um, Based on these problems, I have some good news in that regard is, first of all, that despite a complicated uh, description I have given, the insurance companies are in interested. That is very uh, important, still interested. Might be it is because uh, they have less other uh, profitable areas, but uh, the insurance companies are interested. They are working with, Microfinance organizations, they are developing their agent channels and also the qualification and the standardization of claims adjustment is actively driven by the insurance companies. We are very thankful, for example, for AgroSeguro from Spain, we, who helped us in uh, preparing guidelines and protocols for claims adjustment in a number of uh, fruits and so on. And this is this cooperation has to go further, but uh, we all these uh, guidelines and protocols, they are presented, they are publicly available. The farmers can, we'll see, yeah know about it. Yes, they, most of the farmers know about, but they try to read it in a way which is more profitable for them. Uh, the political will is also available. That is also very important that the government is interested in uh, developing out of the pilot towards a 
agro insurance system in Georgia. Starting in 2020, we have already obtained a very important thing that we have had a three-year budgetary framework for uh, subsidies that uh, stimulates, of course, uh, the, will, the, the readiness of insurance companies to strategically invest. And now we are, uh, we reached a step where we understood we have to change in the approach to separate between business farmers and subsistence farmers. And now we are practically completed with the government on a new product, an innovative insurance program, the so-called universal program, we specially designed for subsistence farmers, covering their input costs with a trigger of 30% and the subsidy level of 85. We hope to enter with this product really a big number of subsistence farmers in regions that are practically not penetrated by insurance and also crops they are practically not penetrated by insurance. Uh, uh, this program will start hopefully in 22, now are the last preparations. Uh, and uh, we hope in a couple of years have more understanding on uh, a countrywide uh, risk mapping and uh, really the ability to move away from flat tariffs to regional and uh, crop-wise uh, structured tariffs. The story is we have to learn all by ourselves because climate observations are still very weak. So uh, we are collecting the experience by our own. This is uh, how we understand uh, the development already of agroinsurance. Uh, in uh, the next years. I hope that a couple years after we are come, we will have more information also about yields so that we can really talk about crop insurance in Georgia. That is, I think, all what I want to see now on a, because uh, we are talking about a project, a very concentrated project, which is today um, has less economic effect because of its uh, penetration, but which for sure already pushed forward insurance mining in that regions where the industry is active. Thank you. Thank you very much, Davy. Um, I have a very, very quick question. Maybe you can give us a short answer. You represent the industry association. What is the particular role the industry association can play in order to develop such an agricultural insurance scheme? Mm. We are the major partner for the government in uh, negotiations on terms, on uh, data, on, uh, on, for example, of mediation. The insurance mediator with the insurance association is uh, looking for out of court settlements also for these insurance programs. So the role is quite uh, intensive. Uh, we are the major source of uh, information. I can tell you differently. The weakness, I, one of the institutional weaknesses of our agro insurance uh, uh, program and the future system is uh, that other associations, farmers associations, for example, consumers associations, and so on, are uh, weaker in Georgia. So we need their voice, we will need, we will need their expertise, we need their discussions, and that is the deficit today. So we, this is also what we are trying to support, like as well as uh, an independent, independent core 
of uh, claims managers. We are all interested in an independent, qualified core of uh, claims managers. We are now consolidating, thinking about how to come to it. We are also using, for example, Agrusaguro's uh, experience all in terms of how to finance them, independent people. Uh, so uh, we understand, I think we understand clearly that qualified partners representing uh, farmers are very, very important. We think that uh, the insurance association has most of the features of representation and qualification in these discussions with the PPP uh, regarding agroinsurance. And a very special role again, the mediation. The mediation out of court settlements, very effective, very efficient with our uh, very good group of mediation. And it is directly embedded in the government program. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to welcome Andre from IFC to the floor. And we're interested to now have a different perspective, more from the uh, international donor side. And he will present findings from other regions, mainly from Kosovo, Ukraine, and Azerbaijan. So thank you very much for being here as a speaker. And I'm looking forward to your presentation. Hello to everyone. It's my pleasure to be here and to share uh, some of the experience and lessons learned. So, yeah, I mean, our role as the organization is actually to help uh, to develop the markets. And uh, during the last uh, 13 years, which we were involved in the agriculture insurance market development, um, uh, we have found out quite a lot of interesting stuff that I really would like to share with you. So, uh, I made my presentation less kind of numeric, but more on their uh, kind of triggering some specific topics, but for sure I will provide you some more uh, detailed information. So first of all, uh, just to summarize and to, uh, to make this kind of provocative question, what do you think that's maybe their key elements of success to implement agriculture insurance in any uh, specific market? Is it like the government supports and premium subsidies or it's a variety of good insurance products or do you think this is knowledge of insurance markets uh for sure active insurance market awareness of farmers bundle insurance and finance and during their uh the, the period of time uh, i just realized that actually all this or even more uh is needed and so uh, just a few examples uh, for example, in Ukraine, we had some kind of system of agriculture insurance since 2000, and the government played some role, and uh, sometimes that role may be even uh, bad for the market development. Uh, in mid-2000s, uh, the government provided premiums, uh, premium subsidies, uh, but didn't restrict uh, any kind of uh, didn't provide any requirements to the insurance companies in terms of the products, in terms of their uh, reinsurance and so on. And in the end, uh, we had a very bad impact of such kind of uh, exercise because more than 60, just I mentioned 60 insurance companies were offering some kind of insurance because no one from them haven't had any insurance experience in agriculture insurance, uh, like without almost any reinsurance and after a few years and the third and, and the third year it was always no uptake from the government from the farmers even if their uh, government support were still offered to those farmers so for sure another example uh, was uh, only happened there a uh, premium in place that's what we have uh, tried to do with the, like purely uh, non-government, purely market-based um, uh, like uh, pilots 
where we have one bank and one insurance company and as well one input supplier company and the input supplier and the bank as they given actually their uh, their financing to the same clients they decided to use insurance as the tool uh, to protect their uh, their loans uh, and at that time they also decided to give their uh, premium subsidies to to the to the farmers uh, but surprisingly, we haven't had any kind of big uptake from the farmers, and this is another learning that I will share with you uh, a little bit later. So, what we do have as a market conditions in all those three countries, and they are quite a uh, similar one, and this is basically similar to what uh, Nadika mentioned, Devi, so uh, there is no or quite low insurance uptake. In many of those markets, we haven't had any agriculture insurance. And uh, to be fair, that's uh, their insurance culture itself it doesn't exist, at least in our kind of uh, part of the world. So just to buy insurance, uh, it's something kind of weird. Uh, I mean, it's more or less okay right now with their mandatory car insurance, but uh, this is the question of the mandatory. And uh, without without culture to be insured to pass the risks, this has become even more uh, hard to sell such hard concept as the agriculture insurance to the farmers that uh, still think about other kind of uh, ways of uh, risk reduction, as Medica mentioned, expecting some support from the government. So once the government providing any other kind of support, uh, in case of losses, just forget about the agriculture insurance in place. So the farmers will definitely wait for the government support. And uh, if only this is their other team, then uh, the, the system will not uh, be in place. Uh, this is what we have seen uh, right now in Kosovo, for example. Uh, we just, in the beginning of this process of establishing their system, we do have products, we do have uh, awareness, we do have uh, even government subsidies, but still the government still have the program uh, or let me say um, mentioning somehow that the farmers will get uh, support in case of losses. And guess what? The farmers is reluctant to buy insurance because uh, this is additional cost, even if it's not a high price. As well, what is quite important is the awareness of stakeholders. And as we're talking about the system development, where we pretend to have not only a uh, pure business, but also we see the big role of the governments, um, because uh, by learning the examples from their other countries where the system is actually working, we see that there is the pure role for the government, there is the role for their private sector, and the PPP models work the best. Uh, instead of if we have only one of those components, we have some kind of a low uptake or only some uh, kind of clients will use uh, their insurance. So, but this minimum awareness also bring some problems and issues. And as David just mentioned, uh, uh, was this kind of communication with the government. So if they don't know what to do, this becomes a problem. So in this case, we may do a lot of good stuff, but at the same time, if within the government, we have kind of different uh, views and policies, or if they don't see clearly what they exactly would like to do, uh, this brings me another example from Azerbaijan. Uh, we have started the project uh, five years ago, but we ended it earlier because we faced with that kind of feeling that within the project timeline, we will not be able to achieve what we have planned because their decision-making process uh, in Azerbaijan was quite slow. Uh, and so once we have advised different options, uh, pool, not pool, I mean, and all those kind of options have take place. I mean, uh, I, I'm not their uh, kind of uh, fan of some specific uh, system because I see that in many cases, all those system may work is depend on their, uh, on, on, on some market conditions and their, uh, how you structure these models. But uh, more or less uh, this, Understanding from the stakeholders, from the key stakeholders, is quite crucial. Uh, low insurance products quality. Uh, this is other stuff for no insurance products, uh, no government support programs, or not structured. 
uh, and no trust in insurance markets. So what actually we can do in, in such conditions? And that's just exactly what it should be done, is like to do awareness for all stakeholders, not only for their farmers, not only for the insurance companies, uh, but as well to teach their uh, the governments and to have uh, that constant process. Uh, with data right now, it's more easier uh, because once we have started, uh, this was one of the biggest issue for Ukraine, for example, is data quality and yields. And uh, we have spent a huge amount of time, first of all, just to collect the data in one place. Uh, then to clean the data, just, then just to finalize, just to find out what data is actually can be used because uh, a lot of that data was kind of mm, not that good quality that we actually can use for the product developments. Uh, but after that, uh, right now we have a lot of uh, like new data available from the satellites, from their uh, some uh, model data, and that uh, data increase the quality year per year, and as well their access and price of the data uh, dropped dramatically. So as for now, I see that most probably this is not the biggest issue. Uh, and as well on the product development side and the product quality, it also not that much big issue right now because uh, we see so many different uh, companies and agencies uh, capable to provide the good guidelines as well from the reinsurance side. So this must probably not their the bigger thing, but uh, the most important one is just to bring uh, their good, trustable partners uh, to to the market, and as well to create their the momentum. You know, like just to uh, that the all stakeholders is ready because if. As a project, you come to the country, but uh, what the st stakeholder, the key stakeholder is not yet ready, most probably it will not be any results. You can come with their uh, number of good products, number of their uh, of the insurance companies ready, but then uh, most probably only uh, kind of good educated or those farmers who actually have those risks will be interested to buy and you uh, will not get that uh, penetration as you have expected. Another thing is trust. So most probably this is one of their biggest issue that we have faced uh, in Ukraine, uh, because as I mentioned before, uh, that's mid 2000 uh, spoiled a little bit uh, their, uh, the markets. And even after 10 years, the farmers, they do believe that, they do remember uh, some bad cases and, uh, and, and, and uh, they are like hesitant to, to try. So what we do, what we have done uh, differently, instead of just saying, oh, you know, like agriculture insurance is good, you should try. Uh, basically the best, uh, the, the best kind of promotion for the farmers is once some that their recommendation from trustworthy partners. I mean, it may be even there are good partners from their, from as a bank, or it may be the input suppliers. Input suppliers are they are the most kind of closest to the farmers. They do speak with them at the same language, and uh, what we have seen that they are with the input suppliers, uh, it may be quite a good uh, thing to do. So, uh, as well, the products should be simple and transparent. Uh, in Ukraine, for example, we have uh, some insurance products that uh, I, I don't like 60 pages, uh, just writing with the small fonts. And you know, like the farmers actually, they are, they, they not just the technically, physically not capable to read and to understand what uh, it is about. And it's also impacting on trust. So they, they say, okay, so you must probably be doing some, you're writing some with the small fonts, something that I will not be able to get their indemnity payment back. And, and in many cases, it's true. Uh, quick indemnity payments, another thing that's also may overcome their trust issue. And uh, in many cases, their parametric index insurance may change and bring this kind of uh, quick payments. Uh, and this is what we have done. And I will told you uh, that, that example uh, on, on the next slide. Um, but uh, quick payment really change their behavior from the farmers. And once they get the payments, they are becoming that kind of uh, 
the, the best advertisements. So once the farmer say to their neighbor that he gets the indemnity payments from that from this insurance product, I mean, and that farmer also gets some kind of loss, most probably for the next year, that next farmer also will be interested to look and to try. Start small. I mean, this is also quite good to learn for me. Instead of doing there are 10 different insurance products and trying to approach everyone, it's the best just to do a small pilots uh, and to test if, if the, those products are interested for the farmers. Because in many cases, what we have done, we have done great, excellent products. But if it's too hard to understand for the farmers, or most probably this is not covering their needs, then there is no sales. Exit expectations, I mean, uh, I mean, it's uh, to build that kind of uh, trust. Uh, it's also combine all this kind of quick payment, all, but also uh, be close, be uh, as fast as possible, and uh, be in, uh, connected, uh, respond quickly, and uh, strong oversight. Uh, so, as in, this is kind of uh, clear for everyone, you may spend uh, to, to, to build your trust for years, but uh, only one key is can break it. And uh, it's almost impossible to get that trust back. So the trust, I guess it's kind of crucial thing to, to do in, in the initial, and this is one of their key elements as well uh, on the system development. The Jay, good question- Two minutes left. Two minutes left. Oh. There are uh, quite interesting question. The price is it really a driver of sales because in many cases they say, okay, so can we have their lower price? I can tell you for sure that the price is not their, uh, the thing. Everything which is not for free can be expensive. I have there are cases when there are farmers who can propose to buy insurance for 1% uh, and they told it's, it's too expensive because the thing is not in price. The, thing is on the value. If the clients see the value in this product, they will pay and they will actually um, do, and the, the, in, in many cases, not even the thing with their with the subsidies. So uh, as well, once you understand what the clients needs, then you're able to give them their value and then the, uh, to, to figure out what's actually their, their, uh, the price for money. So client will pay only if they see value for him. And so uh, this is the, 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 the truth. So just analyzing the, uh, and also it's quite important to know who is your client, right? So because their agriculture insurance is a bit different from the other types of insurance. And the farmers usually is those guys who are doing this business for multiple years. And uh, in, in this case, uh, this is your constant clients. And it may not be like this year you're doing one thing and next year you're doing some bad thing, just you will lose the clients. And so, as I mentioned before, with the trust, so this is, that's, uh, 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 this can be the, the, the case. And the farming, they're not doing this only for money. This is their life, and this is their future. So the, the thing is actually how the insurance can help them to be more sustainable. This is what you may think about as the part of the value proposition. Uh, why insurance? Most probably will not stop that much uh, on that. Uh, but uh, the thing what's I also realized, uh, and I think it's quite important insight to, to share with you, is like, okay, so we can have all those parts of the, of the puzzle, and it's good if we have some kind of mandatory insurance for sure. It's like simplify a lot of, uh, let me say, just to get the, the big numbers. But uh, if you are not talking about the mandatory insurance, I get there, I, I guess that the biggest thing, uh, what we may do uh, to improve the sales and to increase the sales is to make the insurance as a part of their bigger financial proposition. So for example, uh, it's either integrated to the financial products or another, I guess, quite great example from Ukraine, we started the good pro uh, the program with their, one of the input suppliers, Syngenta, five years ago. Uh, and the request was that to develop their index, weather-based index insurance for their clients. Uh, and the, the offer is actually 
by farmers buying certain kind of package of their products, they're offering them like free of charge insurance for sure it's incorporated into their uh, into the price of their of the, of the products. But uh, this is their free of charge insurance, and this is the real insurance with the real reinsurance. And the farmers, and they made it as their marketing purposes. They made it as the part of their their value proposition to the farmers. And after five years, uh, their result is uh, from the last year at least. I don't know yet for this year, but for the last year, we get almost nine hundred thousand hectares insured, uh, more than three thousand two hundred. Uh, active policies and it's like four forty million dollars program, uh, and it is uh, all, all, like last year each third farmer get indemnity payments, and this is an example when their agriculture insurance is not the part of the government program, but it's they're well integrated into their financial uh, solution. And as I mentioned before. Just having the subsidies in place, just having the good products in place, just having the good insurance uh, insurance companies in place, it not necessarily uh, will lead to their good sales. So you should have that kind of puzzle and if possible also integrate their uh, banks because for them it's actually the same kind of good products to protect their uh, cash flows. And this is for sure the excellent tool for the government uh, to stabilize their um their uh, budgets so it's it's the thing just to to have those win 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 uh in all stages but you really should be very careful in terms of their assessing understanding of their market conditions and just building this uh system without focusing i mean on specific product type or a specific product well, system, I, I guess this is not that least relevant uh, instead of uh, having the full picture. I guess that's it from my side. Um, and I will be glad to answer all your questions if you have any. Thank you, Angie. Uh, I have a very, very quick question and please with a very short answer. We heard earlier, um, from the example of the former Yugoslavian countries that, yeah, size matters. We need to get big numbers and ideally we would sell one product across countries, but that's a problem because there are different regulations. Do you see in the countries that you work in, do you see any approaches, any discussions among regulators or governments to maybe come up with a product that is, goes across countries? Maybe to better spread the risk, to have bigger numbers. Have you seen that? Uh, I, I, I do believe that uh, the products actually should be uh, developed on the needs of the exact country and on so their kind of specific conditions for each country and make it possible to the specific uh, region itself. Um, and that's why, I mean, to develop any product is not that hard, right? So once you know what to do, it's not their, the, the biggest kind of issue in the problem. I guess that we need to go from their needs perspective instead of their what we may do uh, as a product or what is like easier for us to do as a product. Yeah, thank you. Um, there's one question in from the chat and maybe Devi or Natika can answer that. And it's a very simple question. In the absence of a bigger government policy, do you see this, and I think this means agricultural insurance or climate risk insurance, as a viable project or product? Or maybe we need to discuss what means viable, what are the conditions for being viable? So maybe, Davy, start with you. You're still on mute. I think the question itself is, what is a broader policy of the government? The broader policy of the government is, has different reasons, my understanding. One is to spend less money and to say we have introduced a government mechanism. That is one very important story in starting in Georgia, especially six, seven years ago, till now. Yeah, the government is spending $3 million. 
and saying that they have a guarantee mechanism. That is one story. But then the government also develops to an age when they want already to have economic and even macroeconomic results out of all of this. And then they have to come up with more serious consideration. Then I think it's very important to understand that is in Georgia and also I'm sure other ways that the government uh, is uh, coming up with a lot of efforts to intensify agro-production, to bring in absolutely new crops. For example, in Georgia, I don't know, pistachios, uh, olive oil, and so on. Or also very interestingly, that is also a modern development, not to change the structure of smallholders under one hectare, but to bring in very efficient uh, crops, for example, uh, bog bilberries, yeah, which have an extreme outcome even of small crops. So this is what is happening. And this is, has to be answered there also with insurance. We are to the today's system is of insurance is a pilot. It is not a system in Georgia. I'm sure that within a couple of years, it will fit in, in the, or, or it will die. That is the story is it has to answer the needs. Okay, thank you. Nadika, your views? Uh, <clears throat> so I think that David covered almost everything. I would just add that here also in North Macedonia, uh, the government would like to um, show to the farmer that they care about them. Because uh, through uh, in their involvement in the insurance, uh, agriculture insurance, and uh, also, I think that uh, what is specific here, especially in North Macedonia, is that um, the government says it will be mandatory. So if it's mandatory, without their control, they uh, believe that uh, it looks like that they're giving like a full portfolio of, uh, of uh, or, or the one whole target the group to the private sector to operate. You know, they, they would like to control that uh, sector since they are putting this mandatory agriculture insurance in, in there. So without them, if we say that what is the answer, without them, yes, we will not be viable. Yeah. There was one answer in the pool, which you already answered around uh, the expectations uh, of the pool. So Sorry, the question was in the chat, not in the pool. The expectations of the pool that there will be lower premiums, uh, better products, you answered that already, that you believe that it's very likely. Um, I would like to address one question, maybe to three of you. Um, you spoke around the problem, about the problem that the government pays for losses and it makes insurance. If that happens, no one needs insurance. If you have to guarantee that the government pays anyway, so why buy insurance? What solutions do you say out of that? Do you see out of this? trap. Do you discuss that with the governments? Um, how could that be solved? Maybe Andre, you want to start to answer that? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. It's an it's, it's awesome question. Basically, uh, the, the idea is just to show showcase to the government. So in fact, instead of paying some money, and they are not efficient in that, they don't have any capacity to do the loss adjustments. They don't have any uh, kind of resources. And in, in many cases, they don't have any budget for that. So meaning that they're using this money from somewhere else instead of using those money to for certain kind of other developments. So uh, they, in many cases, they just simply don't understand that. But once you are capable to show them, instead of spending this money and not like even estimate the money what you may spend for the next year with this climate change, you are secured with the agriculture insurance scheme to spend their expected amount of money every year and to pass that loss adjustment and indemnity payments to their insurance companies and to their insurance companies which are their business. They will be more efficient, they will be faster, they will be cheaper. And for their government purposes, this is an excellent tool to stabilize their and to plan their, uh, their budgets. So that's why this is like no way to have those two tools together. This is just to convince them and to help them to build this understanding how they can change and how they can shift to, their, uh, to this kind of uh, system. Yeah, and this is the role of the government. I do believe that most probably in terms of the subsidies, this is the best subsidies that the government may do because other subsidies 
may destroy the market or even spoil it somehow. But their agriculture insurance subsidies, this is their absolute unique and good tool and the best tool as the government may support the, the, the client, their farmers in case of their uh, climate change. I, again, a good news from Georgia. Our government is practically hardly redu uh, refusing to pay any compensations in terms of insurable losses. That is very important. And that is already over a couple of years, even in dramatic events. I'm sure that six days ago, the event where 20% of uh, insured were involved. The same percentage of not insured farmers is also involved. They will not pay compensations. Despite we have local elections in one month. Adika, do you want to add anything on that? Um, in uh, North Macedonia, I think that um, uh, before that, through direct uh, payouts, there was no system. So, uh, and uh, a lot of money were, um, uh, there was a, a huge flow of money to the farmers without uh, a real loss assessment uh, or real losses. But now uh, to the pool, what we see here is that from one side, the government says, we will include the insurance sector. They will get, they will be compensated for that, but also because they are experts in that area. They will help with the underwriting, actuarial work, reinsurance, but we will control the sector since we see that this is a very vulnerable sector and very important for our economy. Um, also, they, uh, again, I will say this, what they're putting mandatory, uh, uh, what is the story behind this as uh, we will for, in a way force you to buy insurance uh, to, to protect your production but because we are giving you other subsidies for production of the crops, for agrotechnological measures, for all other measures that exist in the program. So for that, you need to uh, uh, be involved in a way, co-finance something. Again, they will also 20% subsidize the premium and uh, make a system. So uh, if we see the example of uh, TARSIM, which is, uh, uh, which we took it as a good example when starting developing the pool, they have really positive results years and years. I think there was only one year when they when the government had to add certain amount of funds for claims. So let's see. Again, I would say like Debbie, it's a piloting one, two years, but I think the system will will come in place. Yeah. <laughs> There's neither yeah. time and need of time. So unfortunately, time is up, and I would like to end this uh, interesting panel um, with just asking you, and we have regulators here, regulatory authorities and representation of that side, but, and we heard about their policy actions that need to be taken. What are your three, yeah, be brief, three actions, three items, three, issues that should be addressed over the next two, three years? Maybe starting with Andre. Uh, briefly, <laughs> I, 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 I guess there are uh, there, this government, uh, this uh, payments, the direct payments, uh, just to be uh, uh, the parts to find out the link with their financial uh, products. So that make it more interested, not only for farmers, but also for their financial institutions to make it sustainable. And the third one is trust, just to, to, to increase the trust by, uh, by doing their good quality products and understandable products. Okay. Hmm? Davy. Oh, yeah. We all are talking one language. So I will go be more concrete. I think for Georgia, for our system, future system, the important story is penetration and connected with is also uh, increasing trust and their uh, claims management, qualified claims management, independent claims management is very important and reliable data. That is the biggest change. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, so now it's very uh, famous, or let's say fashion, this Western uh, Balkan uh, community that uh, we are forcing. So maybe we should think about pulling a solution on a regional level. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, this regional yes. level that I find <laughs> really interesting. Um, we will be organizing the International Conference on Inclusive Insurance again digitally. But hopefully in 2022 it will take place in the Caribbean. Um, in that region, that region that you just mentioned, Nadika, other regions around the world, we have small countries. We don't have big numbers anyway, but we need to come up with a solution. And cross-country cooperation could be one of the solutions. Harmonization of regulation for some products could be a solution. And I'm interested how that discussion will continue. So to all the panelists, thank you very much for your presentation. Klima's picture is back up here. Um, and we have the poll and the feedback that was just popping up, which I'll ask you to complete. So I give the microphone back to Klima. Thank you to all of you. And your microphone is still off. Okay, so thank you, Dirk. And thank you for your wonderful session. So, dear all, uh, thank you much for being with us today on the first day of the Inclusive Insurance Conference dedicated to the CET region. We really have two excellent sessions, very interesting presentation, and importantly, lively panel discussion. I truly believe the topics have raised your attention and you will be motivated to join us again tomorrow. Before I concluded the first part of the conference, I would like to remind you to join us tomorrow at nine, followed by two working sessions on digitalization and customer focus. I wish you all the best to the end of the day and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.